As Alex has said repeatedly on this program, the globalists are moving up their end game, and America, as we know and love it, may someday soon be a thing of the past. But patriots everywhere are getting prepared, and they're doing it with one of my favorite companies, MyPatriotSupply.com. MyPatriotSupply.com offers high-quality survival gear and is the home of the Patriot Pantry line of emergency food storage. The food's delicious, easy to prepare, put together with GMO-free crops and storable for up to 25 years. And My Patriot Supply has developed space-saving and secure food storage bins, unlike flimsy plastic pails that you find almost anywhere else. Visit MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex today for special offers. That's MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex. The globalists are counting on you to be unprepared. Fight back. Get prepared at MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex today. As a matter of fact, you know, so many times we have to work to try to get reform in our government, whether that's truth and labeling about GMO, whether that's getting fluoride out of the water, or whether it's taking action to try to stop the NSA. And so we now have uh, on this one year anniversary of the Ed Snowden uh, documents being revealed, showing us what our government has been doing to us in secret. We now see that there is a movement afoot on the web Let's uh, show a little bit of a clip of that to essentially reset it, to essentially take the initiative ourselves to do something ourselves to try to take back our freedom. That's an important thing. We always need to work together collectively for our individual freedoms, but understand that there are things that we can do ourselves. And so they're trying to appeal, as Edward Snowden has, to individual developers saying, put some features into your app that are going to give some security to your users. Or if you're a user, take advantage of some of the features that are already there. You know, for a long time, there was an app out there going all the way back to the days of Echelon, back in the 1990s. People knew that the government was collecting, people who were informed, who were following things, knew that the government was collecting information on American citizens. And so uh, some people made some tools available like PGP. That was pretty good privacy. It was an, a personal encryption method that would allow you to encrypt your emails. We know that if everybody starts encrypting their emails, it's going to be very difficult for the NSA to do something about it. Of course, it's an ongoing war. They will adapt as we adapt, but at least let's resist. Let's at least do something. Let's play a little bit of a clip for people on radio. We've been showing some video from their, uh, their campaign. Let's play a little bit about it. the internet to be ourselves but governments are building a prison around it we have to stop them but how they seem so vast and powerful but government spies have a weakness they can hack anybody but they can't hack everybody folks like the NSA depend on collecting insecure data from tapped fiber they depend on our mistakes mistakes we can fix the plan reset the net together on June 5th one year after Snowden's first NSA story, we all take one powerful step to turn off government spying and turn on freedom. The call is simple. Find some territory of the internet that you can protect from prying eyes. Seize it and hold it. Are you a developer? Promise to add one NSA resistant feature to your app. Are you an internet user? Promise to try one NSA resistant privacy tool. Okay, now that's the campaign. You can find that. It's a hashtag reset the net. It's a campaign and their motto is don't ask for privacy. Take it back. I think we should do that with everything, whether it's our own personal food supply, our drinking water, uh, our right to keep and bear arms. There's so many different things that we can do, especially, I would add, juries. We see trial by jury as well as even... A trial by a judge is something that is starting to disappear from our country. So we need to take these things back as we can. We also need to work collectively to try to stop it. And I'm going to go to your calls here in just a moment, try to get your, uh, get your take on what Obama is doing as he uh, becomes essentially the reincarnation of Richard Nixon. But I also want to talk to you about uh, Snowden, where you think we could head with that. Uh, uh, besides resetting the net, what do we do to take this back? There's been a lot of ground covered in the last year about educating the public. That's a very positive thing. Now, what do we do to take action? 
I want to talk about how Meet the Press is debating the importance of Snowden. Now, we saw just this last uh, couple of days, it was on June 1st on the Sunday show, they had Newt Gingrich and a uh, Democrat, uh, former congressperson, Harmon, talking about it. Listen to this quote from Gingrich. He said, what right does any single American have to decide that more than the president, more than the Congress, that they're going to leak our secrets? This is the act of a traitor. What Snowden leaked were the traitorous acts of our president, of our Congress, of our NSA, of our bureaucracies. There was an article that broke when I was in Europe about uh, the national health system in Britain. There was a whistleblower there that exposed the fact that in the areas that he was working, they had children and seniors who were locked away for 12 hours a day without any food or water. Now, the response of these people was to, was it to thank him? Was it to put the people in jail uh, that had been doing this, to fire them, to do anything to them? No. What they did was they fired the whistleblower. We see that happening over and over again. People who expose criminal activity on the part of the government are not criminals. That's what Ed Snowden did. Now, the uh, Democrat, Harmon, said... Well, you know, Snowden should come back. He should cut a deal. Uh, he should serve prison time. I think that's where this should come out. This ought to be a lesson to other kids. Watch out. This is very dangerous. Yes, it's very dangerous to expose the illegal actions, the criminal actions of a criminal government that will not reform itself. Now, one of the other pieces of fallout that's happening, of course, from Snowden is that American corporations are finding that it's much harder for them to do business. And in China, the Wall Street Journal just pointed out that uh, Chinese state television ran a very anti-Microsoft segment. Now, of course, Microsoft was one of the early adopters of the PRISM program. They were the first ones in there. They were in there long before the other corporations got in there. They've been linked at the hip with the uh, surveillance state, with the security state here in America, a Chinese state TV broadcast, they say on uh, Wall Street Journal, laid into the Microsoft and its Windows 8 operating system on Wednesday, saying the amount of personal data the system's capable of collecting and the profile of Chinese society it would be capable of producing would, quote, be more precise and up-to-date than that collected by our own National Bureau of Statistics. They said we've seen that the USA has... Relevant acts like the Patriot Act that oblige companies that hold information resources to transfer that to the U.S. government. That's the message that people are getting about our corporations. They need to distance themselves in a real way. People are not buying their phony uh, uh, misinformation saying that they really weren't part of the PRISM program. People don't buy that, and it's costing them dearly. And that's going to continue to go on until companies like Microsoft actually push back. But don't hold your breath. We see that even in places like Florida, small town sheriff departments, it's not just at the top where we see this kind of corruption. It's even down at the local police departments. And it's being driven by our federal government. They're the ones who are offering sweetheart deals on all this heavy equipment that is militarizing our police as if they were going to be fighting a war in Iraq or Afghanistan. And so we see this story about U.S. Marshals seizing cops' spying records to keep them from the ACLU. This is one that was picked up by uh, the Drudge Reports from Wired Magazine. They say a routine request in Florida for public records regarding the use of surveillance tool known as Stingray, and we've reported on that several times here at InfoWars, took an extraordinary turn recently when federal authorities seized the documents before the police could release them. Now, under court order, they were going to be given these documents over to the ACLU, which was challenging it. Essentially what they're doing is they are tracking and surveilling people without a court order, without a warrant. In other words, the police departments, and many of these are local police departments, a lot of it is happening in Florida, they're illegally surveilling people without getting a search warrant. Now, to keep that information from being turned over, they point out, the ACLU, point, ACLU points out, that several times the feds have come in doing everything they can to prevent that information from being turned over. Let me tell you just a little bit about what Stingray is, okay? It's essentially a way for them to triangulate your position using cell phone data. And they're saying, well, because it's just your cell phone data, it's just metadata, and that doesn't really apply. That's baloney. 
That's meta lies. I'd, I'd say they're prevaricating around the bush. Listen, if they can profile everything about your personal habits using metadata, that's just as good as if they're going to actually read your email or if they're going to listen to you. And we know that they're doing that too. We know they're doing that. We've been telling you that they're doing that. Whistleblowers have been telling you that they're doing that. We know they're doing that. When they come in and say, we're only getting metadata, that's a lie. But if they were only getting metadata, if that were really true, that would be a violation. But here's the thing that really bothers me about this. The explanation from the Tallahassee Police Department said, even that this is a police department that according to the Wall Street Journal article said they'd used Stingray at least 200 times since 2010 without telling any judge. And here's their reason. The device manufacturer made the police department sign a non-disclosure agreement that the police claim prevents them from disclosing what they're going to do to the courts. Think about that. Think about that. They're saying that they signed a paper with a corporation that they're not going to disclose this information to a judge as required.